Hello everyone. Today I'm going to talk about one of the most common rare disease, phenylketonuria, which is the disorder of phenylalanine metabolism. If you like this video, or if you want to learn more about the similar topics, please subscribe my YouTube channel or go on to my website, www.medicalbiochemist.com. Today, I'll be discussing about the phenylketonuria and the prevalence of phenylketonuria. What is the biochemical basis of phenylketonuria? How the pathological manifestation occurs? What is the diagnosis and what are the treatment? Phenylketonuria is a most common form of disorders of amino acid metabolism, and it is a rare genetic disorder of phenylalanine metabolism. The prevalence of the phenylketonuria in the US is one in 10,000 to one in 15,000. And it is caused by the deficiency of enzymes that convert phenylalanine to tyrosine. The conversion of phenylalanine to tyrosine involves two main enzymes, phenylalanine hydroxylase and dihydrobiopterin reductase and mutation of these both genes can lead to phenylketonuria. In uncontrolled phenylketonuria, the blood phenylalanine can go above 1200 micromole and there is a presence of urine phenylketones. Let's briefly discuss about how phenylalanine is converted into tyrosine, what are the enzymes and Etc. This phenylalanine is converted into tyrosine, and this is the only pathway for the deg normal degradation of phenylalanine or metabolic pathway for the conversion of phenylalanine to any other products. This phenylalanine and this phenylalanine conversion to tyrosine is catalyzed by an enzyme, phenylalanine hydroxylase which requires tetrahydrobiopterin as a cofactor, as well as oxygen for its enzyme activity. During the conversion of this phenylalanine to tyrosine, the phenylalanine hydroxylase catalyzes the oxidation of tetrahydrobiopterin to dihydrobiopterin. And the second reaction that is catalyzed by dihydrobiopterin reductase converts this dihydrobiopterin that is oxidized from into tetrahydrobiopterin that is reduced from, which can be reused for next cycle. Therefore, the mutation in phenylalanine hydroxylase or dihydrobiopterin reductase causes the or blocks the conversion of phenylalanine to tyrosine and causes the accumulation of phenylalanine in the blood. And the mutations are generally missense, majority of them are missense, and the remainder of them are insertion or deletion or nonsense, splice defect, etc. This PAH or phenylalanine hydroxylase is encoded by a gene, PAH gene, located in chromosome 12, and it consists of 13 exons. And this phenylalanine hydroxylase is generally tetrameric, with each monomer consisting of catalytic site, regulatory site, and subunit binding domain. Once the phenylalanine is converted into tyrosine, it fits into the metabolic pathway of phenyl tyrosine metabolism, which involves, which includes the catabolism of tyrosine, that is the conversion of tyrosine into acetoacetate and fumarate by a series of chemical reactions. Not only that, this phenylalanine and tyrosine interest into other metabolic pathways that is important for physiological function of body. That includes the incorporation of this phenylalanine and tyrosine into the protein. 
Second is the conversion of tyrosine into tyro tyroxine or thyroid hormone. Next is the synthesis of neurotransmitters such as norepinephrine and epinephrine. Skin pigmentation, melanin, etc. And again, oxidation in the liver, which is the catabolism. In uncontrolled PAU, where there is where there is a blockage of phenyl conversion of phenylalanine to tyrosine, the phenylalanine level is to a greater than 1200 micromole in blood, and this impairment. And is this accumulation of this phi up to the toxic level causes the impairment of the various function. And, it's, and it is observed in the form of clinical manifestation include growth failure, microcephaly, seizure, and intellectual impairment. impairment. There are two possible mechanisms by which the clinical manifestation occurs, including neurological disorders. They are first the decrease or absence of PAH activity can lead to a deficiency of tyrosine or its downstream products. That includes melanin, thyroxine, and catecholamine neurotransmitters. Second is the elevated phi or phenylalanine competes for a large neutral amino acid transporter, blocking transport of the essential amino acids such as tyrosine, tryptophan, thereby reducing serotonin and catecholamines. And decreased melanin synthesis leads to hypopigmentation. Further diagnosis of phenyl ketonuria, the blood phenylalanine urine phenyl ketone, phenyl ketones and genetic testing are done. For the screening, the blood phenylalanine and tyrosine are done by chromatographic techniques. And the high phenylalanine and low tyrosine is usually suggestive of phenylketonuria. The second test is the Guthrie test, which in, includes the bacterial inhibition test and use of bacteria to measure the presence of phi in the samples. Third, and the, this was a traditional method where the lab uses the urinary detection of phenyl ketones as a measure of phenyl ketonuria. The rationale behind the phenyl measurement of phenyl ketones in urine is that with the blockade of the conversion of phenylalanine to tyrosine, the phenylalanine funnels into alternative pathway where it converts into phenylpyruvate and it is reduced to form a phenyl lactate or decarb decarboxylated to form a phenyl acetate. And these accumulated products are detected in urines. And this is how the first, how the disease was first discovered and named as phenylketonuria because of the presence of phenyl ketones in urine. In addition to that, it is confirmed by the mutation analysis of PAH gene. And the technique includes southern blood restriction analysis and sequencing analysis. There are three different treatment of PKU. Diet is a traditional treatment method where the individuals with phenyl ketonuria are given a low fee diet. Uh, which includes the exclusion of high protein diets such as egg, milk, cheese, meat, etc. And these patients are monitored to for a control fee level, target fee level of 600 micromole. Other two treatments include the Cuvan, which is a tetrahydrobiopterin, and Palangic for. PKU. With that, I'd like to thank you. If you like my presentation, please subscribe.